Publius Virgilius Maro, Classical Latin, Pu, BL, Wer, L. Ma.ro, traditional dates October 15, 70 BC to September 21, 19 BC, usually called Virgil or Virgil in English, was an ancient Roman poet of the Augustan period. He wrote three of the most famous poems in Latin literature, the Eclogues or Bucolics, the Georgics, and the Epic Aeneid. A number of minor poems, collected in the Appendix Virgiliana, are sometimes attributed to him. Virgil is traditionally ranked as one of Rome's greatest poets. His Aeneid has been considered the national epic of ancient Rome since the time of its composition. Modeled after Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, the Aeneid follows the Trojan refugee Aeneas as he struggles to fulfill his destiny and reach Italy, where his descendants Romulus and Remus were to found the city of Rome. Virgil's work has had wide and deep influence on Western literature, most notably Dante's Divine Comedy, in which Virgil appears as Dante's guide through hell and purgatory. Life and works <laughs> Birth and biographical tradition Virgil's biographical tradition is thought to depend on a lost biography by Varius, Virgil's editor, which was incorporated into the biography by Suetonius and the commentaries of Servius and Donatus, the two great commentators on Virgil's poetry. Although the commentaries no doubt record much factual information about Virgil, some of their evidence can be shown to rely on inferences made from his poetry and allegorizing. Thus, Virgil's biographical tradition remains problematic. The tradition holds that Virgil was born in the village of Andes, near Mantua in Cisalpine Gaul. Analysis of his name has led to beliefs that he descended from earlier Roman colonists. Modern speculation ultimately is not supported by narrative evidence either from his own writings or his later biographers. Macrobius says that Virgil's father was of a humble background, however, scholars generally believe that Virgil was from an equestrian landowning family which could afford to give him an education. He attended schools in Cremona, Mediolanum, Rome and Naples. After considering briefly a career in rhetoric and law, the young Virgil turned his talents to poetry. According to Robert Seymour Conway, the only ancient source which reports the actual distance between Andes and Mantua is a surviving fragment from the works of Marcus Valerius Probus. Probus flourished during the reign of Nero, reign 54 to 68. Probus reports that Andes was located 30 Roman miles from Mantua. Conway translated this to a distance of about 45 kilometers or 28 English miles. Relatively little is known about the family of Virgil. His father reportedly belonged to Gens Virgilia, and his mother belonged to Gens Magia. According to Conway, Gens Virgilia is poorly attested in inscriptions from the entire northern Italy, where Mantua is located. Among thousands of surviving ancient inscriptions from this region, there are only eight or nine mentions of individuals called Virgilius. Masculine or Virgilia, feminine. Out of these mentions, three appear in inscriptions from Verona, and one in an inscription from Calvisano. Conway theorized that the inscription from Calvisano had to do with a kinswoman of Virgil. Calvisano is located 30 Roman miles from Mantua, and would fit with Probus' description of Andes. The inscription in this case is a votive offering to the matroni a group of deities by a woman called Virgilia, asking the goddesses to deliver from danger another woman, called Munatia. Conway notes that the offering belongs to a common type for this era, where women made requests for deities to preserve the lives of female loved ones who were pregnant and were about to give birth. In most cases, the woman making the request was the mother of a woman who was pregnant or otherwise in danger. Though there is another inscription from Calvisano, where a woman asks the deities to preserve the life of her sister. Munatia, the woman who Virgilia wished to protect, was likely a close relative of Virgilia or Virgilia's daughter. The name, Munatia, indicates that this woman was a member of Gens Munatia, and makes it likely that Virgilia married into this family. <laughs> Early works According to the commentators, Virgil received his first education when he was five years old and he later went to Cremona, Milan, and finally Rome to study rhetoric, medicine, and astronomy, which he soon abandoned for philosophy. From Virgil's admiring references to the Neoteric writers Pollio and Cinna, it has been inferred that he was, for a time, associated with Catullus' Neoteric circle. According to Servius, schoolmates considered Virgil extremely shy and reserved, and he was nicknamed Parthenias, or Maiden, because of his social aloofness. 
Virgil also seems to have suffered bad health throughout his life and in some ways lived the life of an invalid. According to the Catalepton, he began to write poetry while in the Epicurean school of Ciro the Epicurean at Naples. A group of small works attributed to the youthful Virgil by the commentators survive collected under the title Appendix Virgiliana, but are largely considered spurious by scholars. One, the Catalepton, consists of fourteen short poems, some of which may be Virgil's, and another, a short narrative poem titled The Culex, the Nat, was attributed to Virgil as early as the 1st century AD. The Eclogues The biographical tradition asserts that Virgil began the hexameter Eclogues or Bucolics in 42 BC and it is thought that the collection was published around 39–38 BC, although this is controversial. The Eclogues from the Greek for selections are a group of ten poems roughly modeled on the bucolic hexameter poetry, pastoral poetry, of the Hellenistic poet Theocritus. After his victory in the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC, fought against the army led by the assassins of Julius Caesar, Octavian tried to pay off his veterans with land expropriated from towns in northern Italy, supposedly including, according to the tradition, an estate near Mantua belonging to Virgil. The loss of his family farm and the attempt through poetic petitions to regain his property have traditionally been seen as Virgil's motives in the composition of the Eclogues. This is now thought to be an unsupported inference from interpretations of the Eclogues. In Eclogues 1 and 9, Virgil indeed dramatizes the contrasting feelings caused by the brutality of the land expropriations through pastoral idiom, but offers no indisputable evidence of the supposed biographic incident. While some readers have identified the poet himself with various characters and their vicissitudes, whether gratitude by an old rustic to a new god ECL, 1, frustrated love by a rustic singer for a distant boy his master's pet, ECL, 2, or a master singer's claim to have composed several eclogues ECL, 5, modern scholars largely reject such efforts to garner biographical details from works of fiction, preferring to interpret an author's characters and themes as illustrations of contemporary life and thought. The ten eclogues present traditional pastoral themes with a fresh perspective. Eclogues 1 and 9 address the land confiscations and their effects on the Italian countryside. 2 and 3 are pastoral and erotic, discussing both homosexual love ECL, 2, and attraction toward people of any gender ECL, 3. Eclogue 4, addressed to Asinius Pollio, the so-called messianic eclogue uses the imagery of the Golden Age in connection with the birth of a child who the child was meant to be has been subject to debate. 5 and 8 describe the myth of Daphnis in a song contest, 6, the cosmic and mythological song of Silenus, 7, a heated poetic contest, and 10 the sufferings of the contemporary elegiac poet Cornelius Gallus. Virgil is credited in the Eclogues with establishing Arcadia as a poetic ideal that still resonates in Western literature and visual arts and setting the stage for the development of Latin pastoral by Calpurnius Siculus, Nemesianus, and later writers. The Georgics Sometime after the publication of the Eclogues probably before 37 BC, Virgil became part of the circle of Messinus, Octavian's capable agent d'affaires who sought to counter sympathy for Antony among the leading families by rallying Roman literary figures to Octavian's side. Virgil came to know many of the other leading literary figures of the time, including Horace, in whose poetry he is often mentioned, and Varius Rufus, who later helped finish the Aeneid. At Messinus' insistence, according to the tradition, Virgil spent the ensuing years, perhaps 37 to 29 BC, on the long didactic hexameter poem called the Georgics, from Greek, on working the earth, which he dedicated to Messinus. The ostensible theme of the Georgics is instruction in the methods of running a farm. In handling this theme, Virgil follows in the didactic how-to tradition of the Greek poet Hesiod's works and days, and several works of the later Hellenistic poets. The four books of the Georgics focus respectively on raising crops and trees 1 and 2, livestock and horses 3, and beekeeping and the qualities of bees 4. Well-known passages include the beloved Laus Italiae of Book 2, the prologue description of the temple in Book 3, and the description of the plague at the end of Book 3. Book 4 concludes with a long mythological narrative, in the form of an epilion which describes vividly the discovery of beekeeping by Aristaeus and the story of Orpheus' journey to the underworld. 
Ancient scholars, such as Servius, conjectured that the Aristaeus episode replaced, at the emperor's request, a long section in praise of Virgil's friend, the poet Gallus, who was disgraced by Augustus, and who committed suicide in 26 BC. The Georgic's tone wavers between optimism and pessimism, sparking critical debate on the poet's intentions, but the work lays the foundations for later didactic poetry. Virgil and Macenus are said to have taken turns reading the Georgics to Octavian upon his return from defeating Antony and Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. The Aeneid The Aeneid is widely considered Virgil's finest work and one of the most important poems in the history of Western literature. Virgil worked on the Aeneid during the last eleven years of his life 29 BC, commissioned, according to Propertius, by Augustus. The epic poem consists of twelve books in dactylic hexameter verse which describe the journey of Aeneas, a warrior fleeing the sack of Troy, to Italy, his battle with the Italian prince Turnus, and the foundation of a city from which Rome would emerge. The Aeneid's first six books describe the journey of Aeneas from Troy to Rome. Virgil made use of several models in the composition of his epic. Homer, the preeminent author of classical epic, is everywhere present, but Virgil also makes special use of the Latin poet Aeneas and the Hellenistic poet Apollonius of Rhodes among the various other writers to which he alludes. Although the Aeneid casts itself firmly into the epic mode, it often seeks to expand the genre by including elements of other genres such as tragedy and etiological poetry. Ancient commentators noted that Virgil seems to divide the Aeneid into two sections based on the poetry of Homer. The first six books were viewed as employing the Odyssey as a model, while the last six were connected to the Iliad. Book one, at the head of the Odyssean section, opens with a storm which Juno, Aeneas' enemy throughout the poem, stirs up against the fleet. The storm drives the hero to the coast of Carthage, which historically was Rome's deadliest foe. The queen, Dido, welcomes the ancestor of the Romans, and under the influence of the gods falls deeply in love with him. At a banquet in Book II, Aeneas tells the story of the sack of Troy, the death of his wife, and his escape, to the enthralled Carthaginians, while in Book III he recounts to them his wanderings over the Mediterranean in search of a suitable new home. Jupiter in Book IV recalls the lingering Aeneas to his duty to found a new city, and he slips away from Carthage, leaving Dido to commit suicide, cursing Aeneas and calling down revenge in a symbolic anticipation of the fierce wars between Carthage and Rome. In Book V, funeral games are celebrated for Aeneas' father Anchises, who had died a year before. On reaching Cumae, in Italy in Book VI, Aeneas consults the Cumaean Sibyl, who conducts him through the underworld where Aeneas meets the dead Anchises who reveals Rome's destiny to his son. Book VII beginning the Iliadic half opens with an address to the muse and recounts Aeneas' arrival in Italy and betrothal to Lavinia, daughter of King Latinus. Lavinia had already been promised to Turnus, the king of the Rutulians, who is roused to war by the Fury Electo, and Amata Lavinia's mother. In Book VIII, Aeneas allies with King Evander, who occupies the future site of Rome, and is given new armor and a shield depicting Roman history. Book IX records an assault by Nissus and Euryalus on the Rutulians, Book X, the death of Evander's young son Pallas, and XI the death of the Volscian warrior Princess Camilla and the decision to settle the war with a duel between Aeneas and Turnus. The Aeneid ends in Book XII with the taking of Latinus City, the death of Amata, and Aeneas' defeat and killing of Turnus, whose pleas for mercy are spurned. The final book ends with the image of Turnus' soul lamenting as it flees to the underworld. Reception of the Aeneid Critics of the Aeneid focus on a variety of issues. The tone of the poem as a whole is a particular matter of debate, some see the poem as ultimately pessimistic and politically subversive to the Augustan regime, while others view it as a celebration of the new imperial dynasty. Virgil makes use of the symbolism of the Augustan regime, and some scholars see strong associations between Augustus and Aeneas, the one as founder and the other as re-founder of Rome. A strong teleology, or drive towards a climax, has been detected in the poem. The Aeneid is full of prophecies about the future of Rome, the deeds of Augustus, his ancestors, and famous Romans, and the Carthaginian Wars. The shield of Aeneas even depicts Augustus' victory at Actium against Mark Antony and Cleopatra VII in 31 BC. A further focus of study is the character of Aeneas. 
As the protagonist of the poem, Aeneas seems to waver constantly between his emotions and commitment to his prophetic duty to found Rome. Critics note the breakdown of Aeneas' emotional control in the last sections of the poem where the pious and righteous Aeneas mercilessly slaughters Turnus. The Aeneid appears to have been a great success. Virgil is said to have recited books 2, 4, and 6 to Augustus, and book 6 apparently caused Augustus' sister Octavia to faint. Although the truth of this claim is subject to scholarly skepticism, it has served as a basis for later art, such as Jean-Baptiste Wicker's Virgil reading the Aeneid. Unfortunately, some lines of the poem were left unfinished, and the whole was unedited, at Virgil's death in 19 BC. Topic. Virgil's death and editing of the Aeneid According to the tradition, Virgil travelled to Greece in about 19 BC to revise the Aeneid. After meeting Augustus in Athens and deciding to return home, Virgil caught a fever while visiting a town near Megara. After crossing to Italy by ship, weakened with disease, Virgil died in Brundisium Harbour on September 21, 19 BC. Augustus ordered Virgil's literary executors, Lucius Varius Rufus and Plotius Tuca, to disregard Virgil's own wish that the poem be burned, instead ordering it published with as few editorial changes as possible. As a result, the text of the Aeneid that exists may contain faults which Virgil was planning to correct before publication. However, the only obvious imperfections are a few lines of verse that are metrically unfinished i.e. not a complete line of dactylic hexameter. Some scholars have argued that Virgil deliberately left these metrically incomplete lines for dramatic effect. Other alleged imperfections are subject to scholarly debate. Topic. Later views and reception Topic. In antiquity The works of Virgil almost from the moment of their publication revolutionized Latin poetry. The Eclogues, Georgics, and above all the Aeneid became standard texts in school curricula with which all educated Romans were familiar. Poets following Virgil often refer intertextually to his works to generate meaning in their own poetry. The Augustan poet Ovid parodies the opening lines of the Aeneid in Amores 1.1.1-2, and his summary of the Aeneas story in Book 14 of the Metamorphoses, the so-called Mini Aeneid has been viewed as a particularly important example of post-Virgilian response to the epic genre. Lucan's epic, The Bellum Seville has been considered an anti-Virgilian epic, disposing with the divine mechanism, treating historical events, and diverging drastically from Virgilian epic practice. The Flavian poet Statius in his twelve-book epic The Bade engages closely with the poetry of Virgil, in his epilogue he advises his poem not to rival the divine Aeneid, but follow afar and ever venerate its footsteps." In Silius Italicus, Virgil finds one of his most ardent admirers. With almost every line of his epic Punica Silius references Virgil. Indeed, Silius is known to have bought Virgil's tomb and worshipped the poet. Partially as a result of his so-called messianic fourth eclogue, widely interpreted later to have predicted the birth of Jesus Christ, Virgil was in later antiquity imputed to have the magical abilities of a seer, the sortes Virgiliane. The process of using Virgil's poetry as a tool of divination, is found in the time of Hadrian, and continued into the Middle Ages. In a similar vein Macrobius in the Saturnalia credits the work of Virgil as the embodiment of human knowledge and experience, mirroring the Greek conception of Homer. Virgil also found commentators in antiquity. Servius, a commentator of the 4th century AD, based his work on the commentary of Donatus. Servius' commentary provides us with a great deal of information about Virgil's life, sources, and references, however, many modern scholars find the variable quality of his work and the often simplistic interpretations frustrating. <laughs> Late Antiquity and Middle Ages Even as the Western Roman Empire collapsed, literate men acknowledged that Virgil was a master poet. Gregory of Tours read Virgil, whom he quotes in several places, along with some other Latin poets, though he cautions that, "...we ought not to relate their lying fables, lest we fall under sentence of eternal death." Dante made Virgil his guide in hell and the greater part of purgatory in the Divine Comedy. Dante also mentions Virgil in De Vulgari Eloquentia, along with Ovid, Lucan and Statius, as one of the four regulata poeti e. v. 7. 
The best known surviving manuscripts of Virgil's works include the Virgilius Augustius, the Virgilius Vaticanus and the Virgilius Romanus. Topic: <inaudible> Legends. In the Middle Ages, Virgil's reputation was such that it inspired legends associating him with magic and prophecy. From at least the 3rd century, Christian thinkers interpreted Eclogues 4, which describes the birth of a boy ushering in a golden age, as a prediction of Jesus' birth. In consequence, Virgil came to be seen on a similar level to the Hebrew prophets of the Bible as one who had heralded Christianity, possibly as early as the 2nd century AD. Virgil's works were seen as having magical properties and were used for divination. In what became known as the Sorties Virgiliane Virgilian lots, passages would be selected at random and interpreted to answer questions. In the 12th century, starting around Naples but eventually spreading widely throughout Europe, a tradition developed in which Virgil was regarded as a great magician. Legends about Virgil and his magical powers remained popular for over 200 years, arguably becoming as prominent as his writings themselves. Virgil's legacy in medieval Wales was such that the Welsh version of his name, Ferilt or Ferilt, became a generic term for magic worker, and survives in the modern Welsh word for pharmacist, Ferilith. The legend of Virgil in his basket arose in the Middle Ages, and is often seen in art and mentioned in literature as part of the power of women literary topos, demonstrating the disruptive force of female attractiveness on men. In this story Virgil became enamored of a beautiful woman, sometimes described as the emperor's daughter or mistress and called Lucretia. She played him along and agreed to an assignation at her house, which he was to sneak into at night by climbing into a large basket let down from a window. When he did so he was hoisted only halfway up the wall and then left trapped there into the next day, exposed to public ridicule. The story paralleled that of Phyllis writing Aristotle. Among other artists depicting the scene, Lucas van Leiden made a woodcut and later an engraving. Topic. Virgil's tomb The structure known as Virgil's tomb is found at the entrance of an ancient Roman tunnel also known as Grotta Vecchia in Pietagrotta, a district 3 kilometers 2 miles from the center of Naples, near the Mergellina Harbor, on the road heading north along the coast to Pozzuoli. While Virgil was already the object of literary admiration and veneration before his death, in the Middle Ages his name became associated with miraculous powers, and for a couple of centuries his tomb was the destination of pilgrimages and veneration. <laughs> Spelling By the 4th or 5th century AD the original spelling Virgilius had been corrupted to Virgilius, and then the latter spelling spread to the modern European languages. The error probably originated with scribes reproducing manuscripts by dictation. The error persisted even though, as early as the 15th century, the classical scholar Poliziano had shown Virgilius to be the original spelling. Today, the anglicizations Virgil and Virgil are both acceptable. Topic. See also Virgil Portal Topic. References Topic. Sources Conway, Robert Seymour Where was Virgil's farm? Harvard Lectures on the Virgilian Age, Biblo and Tannen, ISBN 978-0819601827 Further reading Anderson, W. S., and L. N. Corderon. Approaches to Teaching Virgil's Aeneid. New York, Modern Language Association of America, 2002. Buckham, Philip Wentworth, Spence, Joseph, Holdsworth, Edward, Warburton, William, Jorton, John. Miscellanea Virgiliana, in scriptus maxime eruditorum virorum veri dispersa, in unum fasciculum collecta. Cambridge, printed for W. P. Grant, 1825. Conway, R. S. 1915. The Youth of Virgil, a lecture delivered in the John Rylands Library on 9 December 1914. Farrell, J., and Michael C. J. Putnam, eds. A Companion to Virgil's Aeneid and its Tradition. Blackwell Companions to the Ancient World. Literature and Culture. Chichester, Malden, M.A., Wiley Blackwell, 2010. 
Farrell, J. The Virgilian Century. Virgilius, 1959, Volume 47, 2001, pp. 11 to 28. Farrell, J. Virgil's Georgics and the Traditions of Ancient Epic: The Art of Illusion in Literary History. New York, Oxford University Press, 1991. Fletcher, K. F. B. Finding Italy: Travel, Nation, and Colonization in Virgil's Aeneid. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 2014. Hardy, Philip R. Ed. Virgil, Critical Assessments of Ancient Authors, 4 vols. New York, Routledge, 1999. Henkel, J. Virgil Talks Technique, Metapoetic Arboriculture in Georgics 2. Virgilius, 1959, Vol. 60, 2014, pp. 33-66. Horsfall, N. The Epic Distilled, Studies in the Composition of the Aeneid. Oxford and New York, Oxford University Press, 2016. Mack, S. Patterns of Time in Virgil. Hamden, Archon Books, 1978. Panousi, V. Greek Tragedy in Virgil's Aeneid. Ritual, Empire, and Intertext. Cambridge and New York, Cambridge University Press, 2009. Quinn, S., ed. Why Virgil? A Collection of Interpretations. Wauconda, Bolchesi Carducci, 2000. Rossi, A Contexts of War, Manipulation of Genre in Virgilian Battle Narrative. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 2004. Sondrup, Stephen P. 2009. Virgil, From Farms to Empire, Kierkegaard's Understanding of a Roman Poet. In Kierkegaard and the Roman World, ed. John Bartley Stewart. Farnham, Ashgate. Syed, Why Virgil's Aeneid and the Roman Self, Subject and Nation in Literary Discourse. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 2005. Sison, A. Fama and Fiction in Virgil's Aeneid. Columbus, Ohio State University Press, 2013. Topic. External links Collected works Works by Virgil at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Virgil at Internet Archive Works by Virgil at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Works of Virgil at the Perseus Digital Library Latin texts, translations and commentaries Aeneid translated by T. C. Williams, 1910 Aeneid translated by John Dryden, 1697 Aeneid, Eclogues and Georgics translated by J. C. Greeno, 1900 Works of Virgil at Theoe Project Aeneid, Eclogues and Georgics translated by H. R. Fairclough, 1916 Works of Virgil at Sacred Texts Aeneid translated by John Dryden, 1697 Eclogues and Georgics translated by J. W. Mackyle, 1934 P. Virgilius Maro at the Latin Library Virgil's works, text, concordances and frequency list. Virgil, the major texts, contemporary, line-by-line -line English translations of Eclogues, Georgics, and Aeneid. Virgil in the collection of Ferdinand, Duke of Calabria at Somni. Publii Virgilii Maroni's Opera Naples and Milan, 1450. Publii Virgilii Maroni's Opera Italy, between 1470 and 1499. Publii Virgilii Maroni's Opera Milan, 1465. Biography Virgil at Encyclopædia Britannica Suetonius, The Life of Virgil, an English translation. Vita Virgiliana, Aelius Donatus Life of Virgil in the original Latin. Virgil.org, Aelius Donatus Life of Virgil translated into English by David Wilson Okamura. Project Gutenberg edition of Virgil a biography by Tenny Frank. Virgilian chronology in German. Commentary. The Virgil Project. A new Aeneid for the 21st century. A review of Robert Fagel's new translation of the Aeneid in the TLS, February 9, 2007. Virgil murder. Jean Eve Maylouf's website setting forth his theory that Virgil was murdered by Augustus. The Secret History of Virgil, containing a selection on the magical legends and tall tales that circulated about Virgil in the Middle Ages. Interview with Virgil scholar Richard Thomas and poet David Ferry, who recently translated the Georgics on Thoughtcast. 
SORGLL, Aeneid, BKI, 1-49, read by Robert Sonkowski SORGLL, Aeneid, BKIV, 296-396, read by Stephen Dates Bibliographies Comprehensive bibliographies on all three of Virgil's major works, downloadable in Word or PDF format Bibliography of works relating Virgil to the literature of the Hellenistic Age A selective bibliographical guide to Virgil's Aeneid Virgil in Late Antiquity, the Middle Ages, and the Renaissance, an online bibliography. The article above was originally sourced from Newpedia and is open content.